Hi everyone, I'm Ken Quatran with Two Rivers Habitat for Humanity with another installment of Habit Chat. I am joined with the president of the Owatonna Chamber of Commerce, Brad Meyer. Brad, it's great to have you. Ken, thank you for having me. We have a lot of great things going on in the Owatonna area. The first thing that we can talk about are the two homes that are going to be built here by Two Rivers Habitat on Lynn and Mosier Avenue. A lot of excitement. The churches are starting to rally around what we're doing. The businesses and individual family members are rallying around what we're doing. So the one home on Lynn Avenue here in Owatonna that's going to be sponsored by Daikin and CDI. That's, that was a $100,000 donation. So thank you to Daikin and Climate by Design International. Then the other home on Mosier, that's going to be a faith build through Thrivent. So we're very happy to have that partnership with Thrivent and things are really starting to heat up. Ken, that is so exciting. We're so thrilled that Habitat is building two homes here in Owatonna this year. Mm -hmm. um, and just what a great partnership. Um, I, I am proud of our business community for investing in this the way that they are and really appreciate the way Habitat for Humanity is able to, to bring those interests together. And like you said, it's, it's not just those investments. It's the faith community and the volunteers that'll get involved, all the support these families. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, kind of gets to the, the bigger goals of the community, which is we need to continue to provide good housing and good housing options for, for people who want to come here. What's great about those two properties is it's right by the trail system. It's right by Lake Colmeyer. It's right by the baseball diamonds. It's right where you can do some ice skating. It's great for them to be able to just walk out their door and take in all that nature has to have for in the Owatonna area. You know, parks and trails are such an important piece of a community. We sort of kind of gloss over it because everyone's got them and all that, but um, we have really nice things right across from these homes. Um, and, you know, now more than ever, just being connected to nature, having those opportunities to be outside. Mm -hmm. um, these are going to be great houses. And you had mentioned, too, with these businesses, Kotke, the Kotke family also donating the, the land. And I, f I didn't touch on that. But, you know, you've got small business. You've got large businesses. And, mm -hmm. and just uh, what a great combination of support. It truly takes a community to make this happen, whether it's small business or big business, just like you said. You know, it's all about these families getting roots now into the Owatonna community and their lives just begin to change for the better because they have that solid, sturdy structure. You know, the, the kids that'll be moving into the homes, can't wait to see them running around, but uh, hmm. it's gonna be an exciting time. We're hoping to break ground, hopefully, depending on the weather, mm -hmm. hopefully by late April. So we're super excited about that. Awesome. So there's a big economic boom going on here in the Owatonna area. The Costco Distribution Center just opened. Yeah, yeah, what a big project for our community and so many players in that. You know, the city of Owatonna obviously annexing the land in. There's a big uh, tax increment finance package. There's all these steps that have to happen yeah. to make this work. Um, but the facility's up. They've got 150-ish employees, yeah. you know. And they, and they, you know, Costco promotes from within. So we've got people who moved here from all different parts of the country to work in this spot. They're ingrained in the community. They're mm -hmm. involved in hockey. They're going to our churches. They bought houses here, mm -hmm. all those things. So it's it's a big deal. And we've got some other businesses too, and we could talk about those later. But yeah, there's close to 400 new jobs that have emerged over the last year because of these, these additions. And the big addition too coming to downtown is the new hotel. Yeah, so, you know... <laughs> growth, it's, growth, and more growth. <laughs> it is, we are so... So blessed. Owatonna uh, has been working so hard on revitalizing our downtown for years. I mean, years and years and years. And within the last four or five, it's been a tidal wave of change mm -hmm. in a really positive way. So the project you're referring to is a new Marriott courtyard that's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, going to start coming out of the ground in June of this year. And then the city's investing in a streetscape on the three blocks right in front of the hotel. So there'll be a brand new road, new sidewalks, new light poles, the whole thing. It's just going to be really a total transformation mm -hmm. of the downtown, the heart of the community. Um, and when we want to attract people here, you know, we, we do, we want to grow. Your downtown is where people look, right? Is it, mm -hmm. is it healthy? Is it vibrant? And... Uh, 
and we can we can now answer yes it is mm -hmm. a lot of great shops downtown here in Owatonna and then the other big thing too is the building of the new school I'm yeah. looking at how much money and all these different corporations that donated that's a significant buy-in to the community when you see just one company individually <laughs> putting down twenty two million dollars and that's our friends over at Federated that's right um, you know it, it just kind of it's on a larger scale from the homes you're doing, but it's the same concept, right? Like the, the private sector really stepped in to say, this is important to the growth of our community. We need a new high school, and we're gonna put our money where our mouth is on this and invest in it. So Federated 22 million, you know, they bought 20 million towards the project, they bought the land, uh, Wengers put money in, Viracons donating glass, we've got all kinds of other donations, Mayo Health Systems donating. Um, and, and other businesses are putting money into this school. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about that is, the whole point is, we're trying to make this a, a, a place that people see as we invest in education, we care about our kids, it's a great place to raise a family, all those things I think are what emanate from a new investment like that. Mm -hmm. And we just are so excited. The, the school district, the superintendent did such a great job of communicating this and bringing it forward. The city was a great partner. And it's gonna go up in the south uh, southeast corner of our community. It'll start coming out of the ground this year as well. It'll be done in 2023. And, and uh, so you've got the downtown, the industrial parks growing, uh, and then a new high school. And uh, we just, you know, we couldn't be more excited. So with all of this development, all this big boom going on, where are these people going to live? That's right. We, now let's tackle right. that part of let's it. Let's get to the problem and here, can, right? Can yeah. the housing be affordable? Yeah. So my boss gave me the latest Maxfield Research and Consulting information on the comprehensive housing needs analysis for Owatonna. We're not going to nerd out and go through every statistic, <laughs> but there's definitely a huge need for affordable housing yeah. in Owatonna. There, there, there definitely is. Uh, you know, the good thing with a study like that, and the city contracts studies like that about every three years to kind of see like, how we doing? What do we need? Um, and do we build what we said we needed the last time? So you can kind of keep it going. So the last go around it was you need, you need apartment, you need rental housing. And apartments have started to just come out of the ground here and continue to. Um, but what this study says, in, what I think it says is you need all of it. You, you need single family houses, rental, senior, mm -hmm. high, high end, low end, all of those things. And so we've got some, we've got some work to do, for sure. There's a lot of work to, to be done, for sure. And I was reading this one statistic. It says Oatana's forecast is to add 1,200 people and 650 households between 2020 and 2030. Now, with all of this growth that we just got done talking about, to me, that number seems a little bit low with right. all this explosion going right. on. Uh, correct. And so I would never argue with Maxfield because they do such a great job. <laughs> I'm just but, asking a question. You know, that's why we're chatting. That's right. <laughs> From my perspective, I think we need to be on a, a, a more rapid growth rate than that, quite frankly. Um, Owatonna historically is about a 1% growth rate year over year. This goes back to the start of of time for our city um, you know if we're gonna if we're gonna fill the jobs we have today and continue to grow the businesses we have mm -hmm. and add to it like we think we're gonna be able to that's got to be more closer to 2% growth rate so that's actually you know you're doubling your growth it doesn't sound like a lot yeah, but it is I know. and um, so you know Ken I, I I think it's we're gonna have to put this into a little bit of of hyperdrive and, and mm -hmm. keep it keep it moving. Yeah, and according to the research here, it says the average list price in Owatonna for a single family home is a little north of $241,000. And then on the newer sections, it's right around $315,000. It's a lot of money. So it's for those people that aren't earning the big bucks in the industry area, right. it's quite a struggle or a challenge to find affordable homes because this number is kind of high. You're right. Affordable housing is in desperate need. Uh, about 30% of our workforce is in manufacturing here. And so, um, you know, manufacturing does a good job of, you know, paying a good wage, mm -hmm. providing benefits, all those things. But, um, you know, as, as we see housing prices go up, 
everything. They start Gas, to become out of reach, food, right? Yeah. Insurance, everything. taking care of the kids' education that all just chips away at how much right. the mom or the single dad or whoever mm -hmm. are bringing in the money. Yeah, they have a, probably a good paying job. Or for those people that don't have the highest wage, it all truly adds up to where maybe they can't afford a house, but maybe mm -hmm. get into some, uh, you know, maybe a apartment. But right. at the end of the day, our organization fights for people to try to get affordable housing. Well, and, and Ken, I know you've shared with me some of the statistics around what receiving a Habitat home does for a family, mm -hmm. and it's remarkable as far as just how successful those people are after they're in that st stable place. So I think, I think you're 100% right. You know, you can, you, you always are going to need rental, right? You're going to need that. People are, are transient and they're just, you know, they're moving and all these things, but for the long term, home ownership is where it's at always, mm -hmm. right? That's just, that's how you build a community. Yeah. And so... Um, it's the biggest investment you'll make in your lifetime. It is. It is. And it's, it's one of the most important, as you've, as you've told me. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it, it all goes to the point of it happens one at a time. And you guys are doing two at a time, mm -hmm. actually two houses. Yeah, we haven't built one since 2017 here in town. Yeah. So it's good to know that we're doubling up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? The community notices and I think is excited. And you guys have done a really nice job of sharing what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's thanks to you and your team. Um, and, and so the bottom line is this is needed and it's going to bring two families a lot of great stability that we're, we're excited to welcome them to, you know, to your homes, to these homes mm -hmm. and to the community. And, um, but there is a need on, ongoing as well that mm -hmm. we need to continue to address. Sure. And what's also ra rather interesting to me when I'm looking at this, this chart here, it shows you how the older demographic, they have kept their yeah. roots here yeah. in Owatonna. And what's also interesting from this study is the younger demographic is buying homes. You would tend to think with the younger demographic, it's the more disposable kind of bracket like mm -hmm. oh, move on rent or whatever yep. the younger generation is, is learning the power of owning a home yeah yeah that it's it's good news but that also takes yeah. up that also takes up the the stock and the inventory that's too right. that's right you know one of, one of the things we talk a lot about is the goal has always been to keep so as people age and get older they want to stay in their homes and so things have kind of geared around keeping them in their homes mm -hmm. as long as they can and I understand that but um, part of that has created challenges with that that type of housing stock too right because mm -hmm. oftentimes it's it's maybe good starter homes as well so mm -hmm. it's this it's this balancing act and I think it goes to that need around we do need some senior housing so that people could that was in the study too. transition <laughs> yeah that's it yeah, right we're not pulling that out of thin air nope, it's in it there in the study that's right I it's ran legit through it last night. Yep. i'm impressed at your homework you did a good job <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> um so yeah there's that piece and you know having having younger people i'm actually surprised a little bit by some of those numbers because you always hear in a community like ours that that the the younger generation will kind of leave yep. and then maybe come back in and, and later in life. But uh, yeah, so we're getting, as we, as we get some momentum on growth and that kind of thing, and there's more opportunity here, um, I think we're going to continue to see that need for housing continue to grow. And hopefully that younger generation continues to stay and, mm -hmm. and buy houses. And I think the younger generation is seeing the buy-in by the businesses, by all these corporations, by the, you know, the, the school system mm -hmm. that, hey, you know, our community's growing. We're close to the Twin Cities. We, we can go to Mankato. We can go to Rochester. Let's just stay here and invest mm -hmm. back into our community. So when I look at the percentage with the household types, it's interesting to me that it says here, according to 2020, married with children is about 22% of the home ownership in Owatonna. What's interesting to me is married without children at 31%. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you try to connect the home to a couple, you would think that then they would begin starting their family. But then 30% um, of home ownership here in Owatonna are people that are living alone. I couldn't yeah. wrap my mind around that, but then you cleared it up for me. Well, <clears throat> I think some of that goes to, you know, our, our aging population too as the boomers get older and that kind of component of it where um, 
you know, people just want to stay in their houses longer. So maybe their spouse has passed away or, or whatever, you know, it just, yeah. it, it happens. And uh, they want to stay there. Their memories are there. It's what they know. And believe me, I, that makes perfect sense to me as well. And so I think that's part of it. Um, recently, and this, this comes from personal just experience with my parents. I grew up in St. Paul. My, so my parents have lived in their home in St. Paul for 35 years, right? Mm -hmm. And they needed to downsize anyway. But some of, the, some of the changes in the metro areas and just some of the tumultuous times that have happened have made communities like ours also a little more desirable from that standpoint. So the quality of life, safety, security, all those things are also uh, bringing some different kind of generations mm -hmm. to our community, I think, also. Mm -hmm. And another piece to the, to the study was the amount of residential home demolitions and the permits that have been issued. So there's a lot of things that go into demolition, uh, you know, knocking a home down, yeah. whether it just got old or was not up to code or whether it just literally fell apart and the city wanted to move on mm -hmm. or who knows, there's a lot of different factors that go into demolishing a home. Right. But what's interesting is between 2004 and 2019, there were 76 residential home buildings demolished here in Owatonna. What sparked my mind was raising awareness for our critical home repair program so you don't have to worry about those yeah. things so you can stay in your forever home. So our critical home repair program is available to anyone, mostly lower income, that have issues with their roof if it's leaking, if their electrical is subpar, if their flooring is falling apart. If your forever home is falling apart, reach out to us at Two Rivers Habitat for Humanity and we can help you stay in your forever home so you don't end up on this statistic. That's great service. And you, that's exactly what happens. You know, we see it all the time as a house, it, all of a sudden everyone knows what the house is. It's like, well, that one, you know, yeah. it's just like it, it starts to deteriorate. And then it gets to a point where at sometimes it's beyond repair and we don't want that. We right. need that because those are houses oftentimes that become some of those starter homes or become some of those, you know, mm -hmm. affordable homes for people. And we hate to see those go away because of lack of care. So what, thanks for that effort that yeah. happens. It probably goes, flies under the radar a lot too, right? Like when you put a new home up, everyone sees it. You're so, exactly right. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, we were, when we'll be building those two homes, everyone's gonna see the foundation, then they're gonna see the walls going up as the mm -hmm. community pushes them up. But the critical home repair program, like you said, is totally under the radar because you don't see our guys going in there doing it or if we hire out some subs to go do it. So uh, I think it was like two falls ago, we had a individual here in Owatonna who's having access issues from his home to his garage. He had the step down cement stairs and he had his walker. So no one could really help him out. He reached out to us and we built him a really nice ramp to access to get from his house to his garage hmm. so he doesn't have to worry about falling. Falling is a big issue with seniors. Yeah. So we do those kinds of ramp builds, not just doing the home repairs. And again, we just encourage people to reach out to us at tworivershabitat.org and you can just go online and get the PDF, see what financially you qualify or if you don't to have that repair program. But we want everyone to stay in their forever home. Mm -hmm. And when, again, we are just super excited to have both of these homes going up in the Owatonna area. Yeah. Looking down the road, Brad, Mm -hmm. What other opportunities are there for businesses coming into the area? Are there some some big businesses also scouting out the Owatonna area, seeing what's available? Yeah, you know, well, well, <clears throat> in addition to the Costco Depot that you mentioned, uh, Rise Modular moved here this year as well and is, is producing modular apartments and hotels. And uh, they're underway and they're employing close to 100 people. Uh, Minimizer is locating here this spring. Uh, their, their building will be done soon and they'll be in that. Uh, Bosch is locating a distribution facility here and that'll open in May of 2021 here. So that's almost ready. Uh, in addition, Revel Greens, which does the lettuce here and you can see it there on this image. Uh, they've expanded uh, to 10 acres and they, they have continued plans of growth Bushel Boy Farms, which does yeah. tomatoes. They've yeah. expanded yeah. in the last year. And we, we anticipate more growth. Uh, we would like to see a truck stop occur out near the new Costco on 14 and 35, mm -hmm. uh, basically at that interchange. Uh, we think there'll be additional industries that move near Costco. And we've got a lot of industries here all, anyway that are growing all the time. Dykins adding space all the time, Viricon, mm -hmm. et cetera. So... Um, Boy, it's, it's exciting. There's a lot going on today. 
And how long have you been here at the chamber? I started in 2004. I had a three-year hiatus where I was up at Twin West Chamber up in the Metro, but we never moved. We, I was commuting for a while and then I've been back since uh, uh, 2016. So 2013 to 2016, I was up there and now I'm, now I'm back. Okay. So you have seen just that explosion that we've been talking about. Just you personally, how have you felt to see all of this growth, to see the community rallying around one another? Because Owatonnans truly take care of Owatonnans. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty neat to see because the business community here, which is who I deal with primarily, right, mm -hmm. with the chamber. So um, it's just, it's a conservative community as far as, you know, we're going to work hard. We're going to put our head down. We're going to not, you know, be overly extravagant with things, and we're just going to keep moving forward. And this—that's been the history of this this community for way, way, way before I was ever here. Mm -hmm. And to see it kind of all come together and really some momentum, you know, finally uh, really happening. Uh, we've had a couple of booms over the t over periods of time, early two thousands. The commercial boom out on the interstate really took off and mm -hmm. you had the Lowe's and the Walmart and all those things happen and and now this is another another boom that's more jobs based. We got more jobs coming and those kind of things and uh, really exciting. The other thing that we don't we, we mentioned for so long and now we sort of almost forget it with all these other things is that Highway 14's Four lane to Rochester yes. is going to be complete soon. The corridor of commerce. It's huge. Finally. It's huge. That should have happened. Oh, I don't want to get on a soapbox. <laughs> you but know. We were both in the news industry together, and yeah. it was just a boiler point for so long, a boiler plate for so long. Yeah. You know, and now that the corridor of commerce is finally now being built, that's just going to open up bigger avenues for both cities. I think Southern Minnesota is going to have, it's already exploding, but you connect. Rochester to Owatonna to Mankato and you've just got this huge and then you got Austin and Albert Lee sitting down a little farther south and there's uh, there's a lot of really pretty good things happening in all those communities. Yeah, I totally forgot about Highway 14. I just try to avoid it because you know with it being two lanes, <laughs> right. you're basically hitting side mirrors going by one another, oh, you man. know? Even on a sunny day, to me, mm -hmm. My wife makes fun of me. She's like, you drive like an old lady. I'm like, I'm just very <laughs> cautious because of all those accents, but you're it's exactly right. It's not safe. Right. Yeah, right. Now right. that, you know, me and Betsy, we got a chance to go check out, you know, them breaking the ground and you can see the vision. Mm -hmm. We've seen all the maps. And then, um, you know, eventually you just start visioning all the trucks going by and all the cars going right. by much safer. And yeah. that will lead to just more development around all three cities, like you mentioned, even the ones down in Freeborn and Mower. I think it will. I think it's going to bring us all closer together because... The outstate suburbs of these smaller communities are, are just going to continue to be beneficiaries also of growth mm -hmm. and housing and development. And, and you've got the medical hub. Uh, we all know that in Rochester. Owatonna has ha you know, a lot of manufacturing and so in Federated. So you've got mm -hmm. white collar, blue collar, and a pretty good medical system. And then you go over to Mankato, which also has a real thriving agricultural business climate as well as a college. You've got some real distinct economies, mm -hmm. but they all play together and are connected through Highway 14. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be really interesting too, and we'll wrap this up in just a second, but you kind of brought it up, how these smaller towns will also start to increase in size because of what's going on here in Owatonna. Right. Similar like in Rochester, Byron, Cass, and Dover, Eota, all the smaller towns are booming because of what's going on in the big city. Same yes. here in, o in Owatonna, Medford, New yeah. Richland, Ellendale, all of them will Blooming just start. Prairie, all of Masika, them. Yep, they're, they're all, they're already seeing it. You know, they're gonna have additional housing and growth and, and that's terrific, I think, for mm -hmm. everybody. But then, you know, with all that growth, again, we gotta find houses for all of this growth. And uh, we have one property still here in Owatonna on Vine and Birch. Then we have three properties still in Wasika. Yes. So as that yes. demand keeps going, we're going we to need, need those houses. We need yeah. more houses. So, you know, we need definitely, you know, people to, right. to step up and help out the organization. This has right. been a hoot. Yes. I've had fun. And that's the Likewise. beauty of this Habit Chat segment is just getting to know one another, talk about what's going on in our community. And Owatonna is a special place to, to be for sure. Well, thanks for, thanks for including us and for building 
two homes here. We're excited to, to be part of it. Well, we're going to get happen. you on the job site. I can't wait. All you commerce and chamber guys, <laughs> we're going to have you on the job site for sure. Right. right. It's, our, our soft hands will get calloused. We can't <laughs> wait for it. Shows you're a working man. <laughs> That's right. Brad, the president from the Owatonna Chamber, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have another Habit Chat coming soon. Thanks for watching.